The government offers some amazing benefits to its employees, but let's focus on the perks that many federal employees can enjoy in a lot of different federal agencies. The first one is wellness time. Now you might not be familiar with this, but this is pretty much doing any activity that could increase your well-being. So if you want to go exercise, you want to take a walk around the block, you want to go to the gym, you are allowed to go for up to three hours every week to do something like that. Maybe it's meditation, maybe it's yoga. You fill out a form, your supervisor approves it. This time does not have to be captured differently in your time card. When you're doing your time card, you don't have to input it. So it's paid time that you're given to exercise or to stretch or to do yoga or whatever it is you want to do. Next is the student loan repayment. Now this is pretty huge and a lot of people might have heard of this already, but pretty much if you're a government employee or if you're just a public sector employee, it doesn't have to be government, you could be a teacher, maybe you're a firefighter, and you have paid on your student loans for 10 years, then you're eligible to have that loan forgiven. Now I just talked to a few people the other day and they, one person in particular, they told me they had over a hundred thousand dollars forgiven. They went to a pretty expensive school, obviously, and they've been paying for 10 years. One day they owed 115, 120,000. The next day there was a zero balance. So you can imagine what kind of freedom that must have felt like. This student loan repayment, this is a one-time deal and the rules around it are always changing and shifting. So you have to, you have to research a little bit to find out if you qualify. But know that the government has already spent billions, with a B, of dollars for giving public sector employees loans. Next is the free services and counseling. So most agencies have an EAP, which is the Employee Assistant Program. In there, there are counseling services. You need financial counseling, it's there. Bereavement counseling. So when someone passes away, say a loved one passed away or your coworker passes away, and you need someone to talk to, you need to work through some of your feelings. There's counselors there free of charge. It's not gonna cost you any money. The agency provides it. There's also a child care subsidy program. Now there's a lot of different requirements for this also. Sometimes there's GS grade requirements like GS 11 and below, something like that. Every agency is going to be different. You can get reduced child care costs. You have to go to work, you need to put the children in a daycare or in some sort of child care center while you're working. That exists before after school care, that exists. The next one is ID Me discounts. You might've heard of ID Me. A lot of agencies are using it to include the IRS and the Social Security Administration. So you have to actually hold up your ID and register for an account. But if you're a government employee, you can take advantage of a lot of big discounts on this website. An example of some are 50% off of Reebok products, or 30% off of Samsung, or 20% off of Yeti. So it does take a while to set this thing up, but once it's set up, you can access like your Social Security Administration. If you wanna know what you're estimated to receive in Social Security, set up ID Me, log into SSA, they'll have a breakdown on how much you are estimated to get. Once you're 62, it'll give you a it'll give you a number there. It'll say like $2,000, $3,000 a month. That'll kind of give you an idea and help you towards retirement planning. Same thing with the IRS. There's a lot of reasons to log in there aside from paying your taxes, but it's a quick and easy way to do that. Okay, next is at times the government will pay for university courses or certification programs as long as it's related to your job and you get approval. So the thing with this is a lot of times it comes with an additional service obligation. So you're gonna to have to sign that form saying that you're gonna stick around for another 12, 24, 36 months, and then they'll go ahead and pay the entire cost of tuition. The general rule of thumb is that the continued service after training is usually three times the length of the training period, but this could be extended. And there's also waivers that will exclude you from this, where you don't have to worry about this. Something you need to talk to your supervisor, figure out what type of training is available in your agency, and then see if you wanna take advantage of it or not. Next is the gym and the dining areas that exist in your federal agency. If you work in DC, if you work in a large building for your agency, a lot of times they'll have a dining facility down there. Now, the good thing about this is if you're not bringing your food in, it's cheaper to eat down there than it is to go across the street and pay maybe twice as much on the economy. You can do it for cheaper, right? The gym, 
One of the great things about the gym with the VA, the Department of Veteran Affairs, also the DOD, a lot of times their gyms are free. But if you go to some of these other agencies, I think maybe the, the USDA, you have to pay for their gym. And other agencies, a lot of the smaller ones, you're gonna have to pay, not that much, probably about $15 a month. And what I would do is that during lunch, I would actually go to the gym. They have showers there. I would go to the gym, knock out a, a 30 minute workout, shower, change, and get back to the office. And what I would try to do for you is see if you can combine your breaks with your lunch. So almost all federal employees, they receive a 30 minute lunch. There's two 15 minute breaks that you can take at your discretion throughout the day. Some supervisors will allow you to take your two 15 minute breaks and combine it with the 30 minutes for lunch. So that way you have a whole hour if you want to work out during that time. Next is if you're in the National Guard or you're in the reserves, understand that most federal agencies, most people that work in the government, they're gonna be very understanding of your circumstance. I had uh, one individual who had to go away for six weeks, six weeks for mandatory military training. And there was no fuss made about it. There was not a big deal. You came back as if nothing happened. You continue to work and it's fine. What I hear on the private sector though sometimes is a lot of private companies when they find out, oh, this person's in the National Guard, they might be reluctant to hire them. Now that's not legal, but it, it still is what it is, right? They're still reluctant. So you can rest assured if you pick a government option that it shouldn't be a, a big headache for you. And if you're watching this video and you're a little interested in government jobs, maybe you're not convinced yet. I wanna share with you some other reasons outside of these perks why a lot of people are pursuing government jobs and why it might be the right fit for you. If you want to learn about that, I want you to watch this video next. If you would like to see more videos like this, please click like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.